So far, we learned about limit definition of partial derivatives. Now, suppose I ask you to find the partial derivative of this function. Since it's a polynomial function, it's a well-behaved function, we can use the trick, basically what we learned in elementary calculus. First of all, the partial derivative of f with respect to x, it means that you need to fix all y values or assume y is constant. So it's basically saying that, hey, I'm taking the derivative of x cubed minus a squared plus 4 and a is a constant. Going back to elementary calculus, this is the partial derivative of x cubed minus y squared plus 4, which is basically a constant. So here you have 3x squared plus 0, which is 3x squared. This is the rate of change of the function with respect to x. And then if you have the given value, given point, we can easily calculate this value. Now let us find the partial derivative with respect to y. Following the formula, we need to assume x is a constant. So basically you can rewrite your function as a cubed minus y squared plus 4 and go back to elementary calculus and take the derivative with respect to y. The derivative of x cubed, x cubed counts as a constant minus y squared, which is just a variable, plus another constant. The derivative of x cubed is 0. The derivative of 4 is 0. The derivative of negative y squared is negative 2y. So that's how we find the partial derivative using the shortcut. Again, this function is a polynomial function. So taking the derivative are basically taking the derivative using what we learned in elementary calculus. Let's find the partial derivative of sine of xy. Again, sine is a well-behaved function. To take the partial derivative with respect to x, treat y as a constant. So you're basically saying that, hey, I'm taking the derivative of sine of ax because y is a constant. Now remember that if you have y equals to sine of nx, the rate of change of y with respect to x is n times cosine of nx. So here you have the derivative of f with respect to x, which is the derivative of sine of xy with respect to x, or you have y times cosine of xy. Your y is basically your a here. So if I take the derivative of sine of ax, it is a cosine of ax, but a is nothing but y. Now let us take the partial derivative with respect to y, and again, here we fix x, we assume x is a constant, and then take the derivative. It is the partial derivative of sine of xy with respect to y, which becomes x cosine of xy. So that's how you find the partial derivative with respect to each variable. And please note that each one of these is a function. So you can go ahead and take the second partial derivative as well. Let's take a look at a couple of notations for you. You can take the partial derivative with respect to x of f of x. So basically you are taking the second derivative. You can also take the second derivative with respect to y. If you have partial derivative of f with respect to y, you can take the derivative again. No one's stopping you. You can also take the partial derivative with respect to x of partial derivative of f with respect to y. And please pay attention to the notation. This is written as f of y. So it means that you took the partial derivative with respect to y first, then you take the partial derivative with respect to x. Also, you can take the partial derivative of partial derivative of f with respect to x with respect to y. So again, pay attention to the notation f of x. It means that you took the partial derivative with respect to x first, then you move on and take the partial derivative with respect to y. Take a look at the order and different types of notation that we are using here.
Example for you. Take the second partial derivative of the following function. Again, this is a well-behaved function. It's a polynomial function. Partial derivative of f with respect to x, it means that y is fixed and acts like a constant. So basically, you are just taking the derivative with respect to x. You have 12x cubed times y minus 2y plus 5y cubed. Now, you can take the second partial derivative of f with respect to x. Partial derivative with respect to x of 12x cubed y minus 2y plus 5y cubed. But please note that these two, they are y's. There is no x here. It means that these two are just constant. So taking the derivative with respect to x, this becomes 0. So you end up with 32nd. 36x squared times y. You could also take the partial derivative of the function with respect to y, which is 3x to the fourth minus 2x plus 15xy squared. So again, remember that when you're taking the derivative with respect to y, x is fixed. Now you can take the second partial derivative of f with respect to y, partial derivative with respect to y of 3x to the fourth minus 2x plus 15xy squared, which is partial derivative with respect to y of the quantity that you have here. This is basically 30xy. Why is that? Because x acts like a constant. And you're taking the derivative of 15xy squared with respect to y, which is 30xy. You can also take the second partial derivative of f with respect to two different variables. No one's stopping us. So let us take the partial derivative of partial derivative of f with respect to y, then with respect to x. We already took the partial derivative with respect to y. Now we are taking the partial derivative with respect to x. We're basically taking the second partial derivative. So here y acts like a constant. So here you end up with 12x cubed minus 2 plus 15y squared. What if we change the order? What's the second partial derivative of f with respect to y with respect to x? It means that you already took the derivative with respect to x. Now you are taking the derivative with respect to y. Well, this is partial derivative with respect to y of 12x cubed y minus 2y plus 5x cubed that you can just see here. Well, taking the partial derivative with respect to y, it becomes 12x cubed minus 2 plus 15x squared. Please note that in this case, the second partial derivative of f with respect to x, y, with respect to y, x, they are the same. Our next topic is chain rule.